Well, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce John Horton, uh, who's going to be our pre uh, presenter for today. Uh, John is the Richard Leghorn Career Development Professor at MIT in the Sloan School of Management and also a faculty research fellow at the NVR. Uh, he does a bunch of, I mean, we probably know it, but he does a bunch of work on kind of market design and organizational economics in online markets. Um, and, you know, I particularly like his kind of his use of field experiments to answer really interesting questions. Uh, today he's presenting, you know, some work on the production and consumption of social media. And um, I think it's, it'll be more interesting to have him talk than me. So I'll stop here and give you the floor. Great, thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation and uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about social media, which um, uh, this is joint work with, with Apostolos who's uh, in the audience. So uh, if we think about uh, kind of what we think of as like traditional media, um, it kind of had this pattern where you have a mass of people who are kind of just consumers um, and production, you know, people making television shows or, or writing or, or doing the news, it was a, a fairly small number uh, who were involved in the actual production, right? So a lot of people read newspapers, very few people write for newspapers. Lots of people were watching TV shows, very few people were making their own TV shows. Um, and, you know, so you get this kind of small number of producers, mass number of, of consumers. Um, and, you know, just to give you a, a, a sense, say, for, for writing and, and, and news, um, you know, there's about 300 million American citizens and only about 1,000 daily newspapers. And if you kind of dug in even further, uh, a lot of that consumption is of a very, very small number of, of stars. Um, and this, this pattern exists in um, all sorts of kind of uh, information goods where you have people who are you know, a small number of, of kind of superstar producers and a lot of a lot more people who are kind of just the, the consumers. Um, but, you know, if you think about social media, um, it looks very different. It has a it has a very different characterization of production and and consumption. So if I redraw my my network um, with a bunch of arrows that I've drawn on here. Yes, there are, are stars that attract a kind of a vast audience. But um, there's also a lot of people that are more like um, us, right? Uh, kind of like we both we both consume, uh, but we also produce. We uh, make videos on TikTok, we tweet, we post stuff on LinkedIn, we post on Facebook. Uh, and you know, we have people that we do have a little bit of an audience, people who pay attention to what we're doing. And that, that's quite different. And I think when people say social media, this is what they're referring to, this, this social aspect. Um, and you know, if you look at, say, this is a, a community of, of uh, econ Twitter, so people who are kind of identify as economists and are tweeting, you can see this kind of dense network. It's not just the way I drew it. Uh, you see a lot of people kind of both producing and consuming and following people. But you know, there are identifiable, uh, quote unquote, stars. Well, you know, a, a, the kind of a naive um, uh, economist view, right, or, or kind of a character as a or a caricature of the econ way of thinking about things is what are all these people doing uh, when they're not getting paid to tweet, right? They're not, they're not getting paid. They don't have any financial incentive. Um, but, you know, people do it anyway. And you might say, well, you know, then maybe this is just some kind of weird thing that, that econ doesn't have much to say about. Um, but I, 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 you know, I think, and, and Apostolos and I you know, think that uh, that's kind of a too, too narrow view of what econ offers that it's, it's really about people pursuing some objective that they have subject to, to constraints. And no, those objectives don't necessarily have to be financial in, in nature. Uh, and so our starting point for this project is to kind of recast what people's objective function is here on, on social media and say what they're really trying to do is uh, accomplish two, two goals. So uh, one is a, an old goal which is to consume content that they enjoy. And th this is not new. This is the same that would apply to traditional media or, or other information goods. But the second thing that they're interested in doing is, is having an audience and having, having attention of some kind. And so, you know, you get this consuming content. People, you know, here's a funny tweet that I, I you know, enjoy and, and that's part of why I'm on Twitter. Uh, but I also, you know, like having an audience and having people engage and retweet and like and, and comment on the material that I have. And that, that second source of utility, uh, we call attention utility and argue is an important reason why people are, are participating. Okay, so what this paper does, uh, it does really two things. The first is develop a, a pretty simple theory of social media that's based on that idea 
of people having two objectives. Um, and so, and, and it's economic in the sense that we're going to focus on people uh, making rational decisions subject to constraints that they face. And we'll focus on what, what an equilibrium will look like. Um, and the second thing we're going to do is we collected data from econ Twitter, and we're going to uh, use that, you know, a test is maybe not the right way, but sort of show you a bunch of patterns and, and kind of stylized facts about what people are doing on Twitter and who they follow and kind of show you that our model kind of elucidates a lot of things that would otherwise be puzzling. That is, uh, it kind of provides a parsimonious explanation of things. So let me just start with a, an example that I think um, illustrates kind of the basic logic of the model to begin. Um, so the first is, imagine we have some user, Alice. Uh, and, and back in the traditional world, pre-social media, uh, she liked reading articles. And um, you know, she kind of had a, a, a childhood dream of, say, writing for the New York Times. But um, you know, the world can be a cruel place, and she's not quite good enough to write professionally. Uh, so, but this was her, her, her world is, you know, she's, she's reading and consuming the content, but uh, she is not producing for the New York Times or, or, or anyone else for that matter. Um, now imagine uh, we live in a world where Twitter is possible. And uh, it's, it's similar enough that Alice, she likes reading tweets and, uh, and she would enjoy having an audience. She would like to produce tweets and, and have people consume her content and be a writer. Um, but she's not good enough at tweeting that people will read her tweets voluntarily. Um, and so she would follow these stars, um, but she's not gonna tweet because no one's really interested in what she's, she's producing. Um, now imagine we have another user, Bob, who is kind of similarly situated to Alice. Um, she would also love to tweet, uh, but uh, sorry, he, Bob would also love to tweet, but like Alice is not good enough to attract an audience um, organically or by himself. Um, and this sets up the possibility of a trade. So what, what's, what can happen here is Alice and Bob will agree to consume each other's content and therefore give the other person an audience. And the, we call this attention bargaining, bartering because what you're doing is you're giving up some of your attention uh, to someone else in order to gain uh, a little bit of attention for yourself. So, uh, so what the world looks like now is you still have people uh, paying attention to stars, but you have people who are on social media uh, producing only because someone else is willing to consume if you're willing to to um, uh, uh, consume what they what they produce. okay um, the The important point here is that a and B, Alice and Bob, they don't actually like consuming each other's content or or don't don't like it enough to do it without this other added um, incentive but they do like consuming each other's attention. Uh, the second bit here is, you know, now that they have a, an, an audience, this is what gives them that extensive margin um, uh, incentive to participate. It's the fact that they were able to kind of obtain uh, some, some, some attention uh, through this system. Um, and now because they, they don't actually enjoy each other's content, but they like having an audience, there's this built-in incentive to, or, or kind of um, instinct to try to renege on the deal um, and see if they could find a better attention bartering partner. Because what they could do is if they could still have the audience member, but kind of enjoy someone's content who's a little bit better, uh, that would be a more, more attractive deal for them. Okay, so that, that's, that kind of gives you some of the intuition or kind of the direction of like where, where we're gonna go. Let me make this um, somewhat more formal. So uh, imagine you have a uh, users who are endowed with ability. We'll call it we'll call this alpha. Um, and they what that means to be a user of quality alpha is that um, when other people are consuming your content, that's how much utility they get. They get uh, alpha from consuming your your content. So it's it's kind of saying like how good you are. And this is all, um, you know, you think of this as just like written on your head, everyone knows it. There's no, sort of no, no uncertainty in it. Um, you know, this is a very kind of stylized stripped down model. Um, the other bit here is that we have this utility that people get from attention. And this is a function of how many people follow you. So how big your, your audience is. And we assume that you have decreasing marginal returns to, to having uh, a larger audience. So, uh, you know, your time is not unlimited. 
And this is the, there's an opportunity cost to following people, right? And so we're, we're kind of assuming here that attention is scarce and that every time you choose to follow someone, uh, you have to give something up and that, that amount, we're gonna call that Q0. Uh, and so what these, this, a user who has an ability greater than Q0, you're willing to follow them uh, even if they don't follow you back. It's, it, you're, you're, these are the stars that you're willing to follow in a, kind of an unreciprocated way. And the total consumption utility you're going to get uh, is going to be the sum of, of the abilities of everybody you follow minus the cost that you have to, have to pay, the, that opportunity cost of, of actually consuming their content. And so just to show you, you know, in a, in a diagram what this looks like, uh, so imagine I put all my users on a continuum from, from lowest ability to highest ability. And I look at how many um, followers they're going to have. So how many other people are going to want to follow them. Uh, and then I, I'll look and see what, what kind of utility they get. And notice here, this is the people who, uh, this is the, the range of people that have ability above that Q0, above that opportunity cost. So you're going to get uh, a few things. And so this is a world without attention bargaining. So you can kind of think of this as like the traditional media equilibrium that I had in my first slide. Um, the first thing to note is that these high ability users, everyone follows them because they have an ability that's greater than Q0. The second thing is that you have a whole bunch of people uh, that don't have any followers. You can call these lurkers, uh, people who are just consuming. They're not, they're not engaged in production at all. If you look over on the, the slide showing utility, um, everyone gets the same consumption utility because they all follow the same thing. So that's just that U underscore C and it's, it's the same for everyone. Um, and then only kind of the, the elite, the stars here that, that have followers, they're the one who actually get some um, audience utility. So they're followed by a large number of people and, and they get the utility from that, but no one else, no one else gets that. All right, now, we, we introduce this possibility of attention bartering, which is uh, you know, the Alice and Bob situation where they can make a trade with each other. Now, um, what's interesting is that this, this possibility is, is made pretty salient um, on, on certain websites. Uh, so Twitter is a kind of a paradigmatic example where they make it very, very clear who's following you and, and who's not. Um, and you can kind of use, you can very easily see if you're in a reciprocal relationship with, with someone or not. Um, and the decision that they have to make as a, a, a would-be attention barterer, so you have two users, uh, they're, they're both below Q0, so they're not, they're not in the star territory. Um, they can follow each other reciprocally. When they do that, they get a consumption decrease because the, their alphas are less than Q0. So this is, this is actually a, a, a cost. Um, and they obtain obtention utility by having one more follower. So they get another they get another follower uh, by by engaging in this reciprocal trading relationship, and they have to endure this monitoring cost for reciprocation because everyone has an incentive here to to defect. So um, what would an, an equilibrium actually look like? So you would have no user is better off following organically someone they do not already follow. So people are, there's no no kind of um, uh, following that 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 you know could happen it would make them better off that they're not doing. Um, there's no blocking pair of reciprocators. So no two people who are reciprocating now would wanna make a trade uh, and, and kind of form a relationship, break their current relationship and form another one. Um, and this, this idea that attention bartering is sustained by some monitoring that you can make sure that you know, you're, they're holding up their end of the, the bargain. Um, and so this re reciprocator calculus is you, you unfollow a reciprocator, you're gonna lose one follower by doing that, but then you don't have to kind of consume their, their bad tweets. Okay, so do people really uh, monitor for unfollows? You might kind of say, well, I would, you know, I don't do that. I, I just, I follow who I like. Um, uh, you know, so this is like maybe the worst social science you'll ever see. But, you know, I, I ra ran this poll on, on Twitter and said, you know, would, if, I, if I unfollowed you, would you unfollow me? Uh, and, you know, there's a pretty, pretty sizable fraction here that say, yes, I would, I would unfollow you. Um, that you know we were in a reciprocal relationship, and if I don't hold up my end of the deal, I'm going to break it off with you. Um, and this was uh, a response by uh, Jeff, who's a computer scientist at Carnegie Mellon, uh, and he he said, "I periodically go through the folks who don't follow me. I consider whether they add sufficient value to follow them anyway. So the answer is, I'd keep you if you were tweeting good enough." 
uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay him or encourage him to write this, but this is kind of the kernel of the model in a nutshell. That it's that for people that aren't quite good enough to get followed as a star, that they're engaged in this reciprocal relationship. So then, um, you know, given the kind of how I sketched out what uh, what it actually uh, what what an equilibrium looks like. Uh, or, or what, 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 what does it have to satisfy? What does this actually look like um, when you solve the equilibrium? And so first, let me just start. There's two kinds of users that aren't affected at all. Um, those high ability star users, the world kind of still looks the same for them because everyone follows them. They still get the full audience utility and they still get the full consumption utility before. Um, and you also have people who uh, we call lurkers. Maybe that's a little too pejorative, but you know they're not actively tweeting. They're just they're just consuming media. Uh, they don't they don't have any followers, um, so it hasn't changed for them. Just like in the traditional world, they have they just are, are strictly here to consume. Um, where things get interesting are uh, the choices and outcomes for users of middling ability, and. What an equilibrium actually looks like is you get uh, the, the, this partitioning of the middle space by what we call uh, clubs, uh, bartering clubs. And what these bartering clubs look like is that everyone inside them uh, follows everyone else inside the club. And what you get is uh, they all follow each other within a club. The, higher the ability you are, the, the bigger the club ends up being. And this kind of reflects the fact that the consumption decrease from following people in a better club is, is lower. And so the, the, the club gets a little bit larger when, when ability is high. Um, they all follow each other and they, they still follow the stars. So they're still following the kind of the best people, but they're, they're engaged in a reciprocal relationship with everyone else in the club. You'll also notice um, they get lots of attention utility because now they have lots of followers. So that's, this is the pink shaded region. So they have, they have an audience of, of their other club members, uh, but they get a lot less consumption utility. And the reason is they're following a bunch of people that they don't, they don't actually want to follow. They're, they're doing it so that they can maintain that, that reciprocal relationship. The, the people here who don't have any followers at all, where that cut line is, where the, where the, where the clubs stop, uh, is the people that uh, they wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would have them. So we call this the Groucho Marx condition, because Groucho Marx said that he didn't want to belong to any club that would have him as a member, and, and sort of the, exactly this, the same thing. That's where the sort of the end of, of this uh, game uh, begins. So, you know, you might want to say, like, well, you know, why does it form this kind of, like, blocky club structure? Um, and, you know, to be honest, when, when we kind of, when Apostolos and I wrote down the initial assumptions and we were solving, uh, we, we simulated before we could solve, we simulated people playing this game and, you know, the clubs emerged uh, from our simulation and we, we kind of found it very surprising, like what, what's going on here? I thought maybe it was a bug. Our intuition was that it would be some kind of smooth uh, trade-off. Um, but what, what, what turns out is it's, it's an emergent property from these assumptions you end up getting these clubs. Um, and, you know, interestingly, our, our, you know, sort of sociologist friends have said it's sort of been like well known in the literature that, you know, people tend to like have favors and reciprocate people of sort of, of like similar status and similar ability. I mean, this just sort of pops out of, of our assumptions. Um, and so, you know, I can't, I can't think I can, can't give you like a great intuition of exactly why it has this blocky club structure. Um, but it does follow and, you know, you can construct the, the solution. I could kind of refer you to the paper for, for the details. But, you know, so we get, these, we get these clubs where everyone's following each other. So what you get um, then, if you kind of map this to statistics or network statistics that people uh, pay attention to, um, you end up getting um, followers that keep increasing in people's ability. So the more able you are, the more followers, the larger the audience that you, you tend to attract. Um, but the number of people you follow ends up changing um, to, to, it has this kind of unimodal peak where you keep following uh, larger numbers of people as you increase in your ability because you're part of bigger and bigger clubs. 
Uh, but then at the highest levels, it kind of drops back down. And what you're getting is essentially these stars who don't need to reciprocate to get an audience. They, they, don't, they don't engage in this kind of um, bargaining because they have such a large audience um, anyway. And so you get this, f what we call a follow-y dip, where at the highest levels, it kind of, um, it goes down. And, you know, in the ratio of, of um, uh, followees to followers, or followers to followees, actually, uh, is kind of continually increasing uh, inability. So these are, these are kind of the core predictions that come out of the model uh, in terms of like what, what network statistics should, should look like. So we want to take right. this um, and yeah, sorry, John. stop here. Yeah, I think this, this might be a good spot. Um, okay, sure. Apostolos actually answered a few questions. So thank you for that. Uh, oh, good. I think one, one thing that's, that's left is uh, what Mariam was uh, asking and this, you know, in the, uh, which actually Apostolos is also answering now, but, you know, would, wouldn't these clubs kind of represent different fields or universities and backgrounds? Like, so, so more like horizontal differentiation? Um, well, so, so we have, so we have a, the, the base model is vertical differentiation and the clubs are, are formed along um, vertical, vertical uh, d dimensions. That's what, what's organizing. But, um, you know, we, I, I, the, the idea that people have, you know, have horizontal preferences or would form into like horizontal communities, you know, that's absolutely true. And you see like the data we collect, we focus on a horizontal community with the idea being like, let's get all economists, you know, who are kind of participating in a community. And then the, the only remaining differentiation is, is, is vertical. But, um, you know, that's not to say that, you know, in Twitter writ large or any social network, people aren't organizing themselves into like sub communities or clubs of, of mutual interests. So, uh, you know, that absolutely exists. Our, you can think of our model as kind of a, a, piece, of, a piece of that network. Uh, yeah, thank you. And then uh, Xiang was uh, just, I'm kind of going real time now, but uh, Xiang was asking, uh, do people trade on their attention or the attention on their network? If people do the latter, uh, that might explain why the followee number uh, increases with ability. So, kind of the, you know, their attention or the attention of the network overall. Well, I mean, you know, we're 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 definitely like a um, you know a micro like the only attention is is attention from other other individuals. There's no sort of higher level, um, you know, kind of kind of notion of attention like some some structural thing. It's all it's all individual attention. But uh, maybe you know uh, Apostolos can kind of keep keep. Um, yeah, sorry, I'll keep you. I'll let. No. I'll, yeah, I'll oh, let you continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So let me. Um, all right, so let me talk about the data that uh, we collected and sort of what it what it looks like. So what what we did. So Repack helpfully maintains a list of people who have registered as as uh, uh, you know economists writing papers. So these are you know academic economists and they've registered their their Twitter handle. And so that's where we start. Uh, it's kind of the seed of the community. And then what we do is uh, we get all Twitter users that are followed by more than three of these economists. Uh, and we get all their, their Twitter info. So we use the Twitter API to extract that. Then from that sample, we trim out inactive and, and spam accounts. Um, and we also have to, we, we trim out some, some accounts that have vast numbers of followers, um, even among economists, but, but aren't you know, in the community. So, you know, Shakira is followed by more than three economists on the list. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't say Shakira is, is a member of, of the, you know, the econ Twitter community. And so we, we put some, some uh, reductions on, on the very highest level, which doesn't actually exclude that many economists, but makes our sample a little bit more, more manageable. So we're, we're left with uh, about 55, about 55,000 uh, economists and they, are collectively followed by actually about 26 million um, users. Uh, and so we construct this sample and let me just show you uh, the, those network statistics. So these are distributions. Note the log scale here. These are our powers of 10. Um, and so this is followers. And then the middle panel is followees. So this is how many people you, you follow or how many people a user follows. And then the ratio uh, is down in the, the bottom panel. So, you know, the first thing to note is that there are users with vast audiences um, so that they have very, very large numbers of people who follow them, you know, consistent with them producing information goods. You know, they're not, they're not stamping out widgets. It doesn't cost them anything more to have, have one more follower. Um, but the number of followees, the, what they're consuming 
um, you know, that distribution is, is, doesn't have nearly so, so uh, pronounced a, a right tail. Now, this, this is partially a, a function of the fact that Twitter put some restrictions on how many people you can follow, but uh, where that cut line is, most people aren't anywhere near it anyway. Um, that most people are kind of following a much, much smaller number of people um, than kind of the right extreme right tail of, of followers. The, um, okay, so, you know, but our model, our model makes a lot of predictions about ability. That's, that's really where, um, uh, you know, where, where we actually have a lot to say. And so we, you know, we can't, we certainly can't use the things that our model is about to, um, uh, that our model predicts as, as our measure of ability. So what we do is we, we use a feature of Twitter uh, that you know some people you know probably are aware of, but what you can do is you can put people on lists and uh, and you know organize like you know you make a list and you can add add accounts to it, and you'll see uh, content from you'll see the tweets that are created by those users, uh, but it doesn't but you're not officially following them, and so it doesn't it doesn't affect your ratio or it doesn't affect how many followers you have, but uh, it does you do get to see their their content. And you know what? What we kind of interpreted this uh, as meaning, and you know, we, you can see in a bit that we think it kind of captures what, what we're trying to get at is essentially people who uh, others want to follow them just for their content. That like they think they're they they maybe don't you know they just want to know what they're what they're producing. They're just kind of interested in what they, they without this kind of um, reciprocation kind of polluting measures. So if you know you just use followers or something. You'd have a, you'd have a problem, but with lists, we kind of think of it as more of a pure measure of just the consumption utility you get from someone's someone's content. So what we do is our ability proxy. We take the number of lists uh, that was that was, a user was added to. Uh, then we take and control for tenure by residualizing with respect to the number of tweets. So we didn't we didn't want to kind of create this bias where just like people who had been around a long time are more likely to be on lists. And so we kind of adjusted for how much they had, they had tweeted. And then we kind of construct from that an ability measure that's just what, what you know, one through 100 of their, their quantiles of where, where people live, okay? So this is uh, the x-axis here is our ability measure. And you can see a couple of things. So, you know, one, the top panel is the number of followers. Uh, the number of followers a user has uh, is strongly increasing with our our ability measure, and which is kind of like on the face of it, it's a some indication that our ability measure is is pretty reasonable. Um, if we look at followees, it's rising uh, in the number uh, in ability, like we predict. But then you can see at the very highest levels, the number of followees uh, starts to to drop, and so this is that followee uh, dip. That the model predicts that if you get to the highest levels of ability, you start to see an end of reciprocation, and people aren't engaging in this this kind of attention bartering. Um, if you kind of put model predictions here with with uh, just kind of parameters that we we actually chose, you know, before we collected the data, um, you can see the model is blockier. You know, you get these these clubs, but you can kind of see the same pattern that the model predicts. You can see that that rise in followers, you can see the follow-e dip, you can see the ratio that kind of keeps, keeps rising uh, in ability. Now we don't observe uh, true attention bartering, right? We don't, we don't know what would happen. You know, maybe two people are following each other as, as stars or uh, you know, that, that, that they would follow each other even if one of them broke off the relationship, they would still kind of follow each other organically. So we don't observe that. Um, but what we can do uh, is we're going to call reciprocation. If we see two people that are both following each other, we're just going to call that a reciprocal relationship without sort of knowing what would happen in a counterfactual, they broke it off. Um, and what you see is we see reciprocation um, in, in the, the top panel, this like this measure of reciprocation, you know, it rises with attention bartering and then starts, starts to fall as, as the model, model predicts. Um, this reciprocator to follower ratio, again, ours is blocky, but the, the, in, the, in the actual data, it's this decreasing uh, line. And then this other, um, the reciprocator to follow E ratio also kind of this like single hump, uh, which is what the, the model predicts. Um, 
The model also produces, uh, predicts assortativity and reciprocation, meaning that more able users reciprocate with more able users. So what we can do, uh, we can take a look and see for, take people uh, a user follows, but who don't follow them back. So these are their, what you could think of as like their organic uh, followees or the people they follow, even though the, there's no, no reciprocation at all. Um, if you look at their, the ability of the followee, like the person, like what's the ability of the people that you're, you're following? Um, and this is, that right there is the, the, the median ability of the person that they're following. And then the, the pink range is the 90th and, and 10th percentile. Um, what you see is everyone basically is organically following high ability users, regardless of their own ability. So among the people that they kind of follow, even without reciprocation, everyone's just sort of following sort of the, the like quote unquote best, best people. Um, now, if we look at re reciprocal followees, so these are people that you're following, uh, but only th these are ones that, that follow you back. Um, you see something quite different. You see that reciprocating followee ability is increasing in own ability. And this is the same thing where, you know, in the bargaining clubs, as you have a higher and higher ability, um, you were you were reciprocating with people who were were better, right? And so the worst clubs were kind of reciprocating with with not so great people. And it's kind of as time goes on, I'm sorry, as ability rises, you get this reciprocation relationship that that's that's more positive. Um, and you know this is this is exactly what the the model uh, predicts, right? So the model predicts that. The organic following should be a flat line that it's unrelated to your own ability, like who you consume, uh, but that in the reciprocation relationships, you get this increasing relationship between uh, a, your own ability and the people that you uh, reciprocate with. Um, so I'm, I'm doing uh, well on time, maybe even too too fast. I think I maybe went through things too quick, but um, you know, to to summarize, you know, kind of what we think are the conclusions or the main contributions. So we think that this two sources of utility attention bartering perspective, um, it, it offers a, a parsimonious explanation for things that I think would be otherwise like pretty hard to explain. So just, you know, one is, you know, doing something without any compensation. Um, and I think it, it also, it, it explains why platforms make a, such a big deal out of giving you feedback um, on social media about people interacting with your content and liking and tweeting. It's because that's, that's in, in a sense, that's the source of that attention utility that, that people crave and people, people want. Um, and then there are also some, some facts that are predicted by the model um, and that, that I would say are revealed for the first time by, by our data. So that followy dip um, and assortative reciprocation, you know, I don't, I don't think as far as we can tell, uh, we don't think anyone has made that that point, it comes out of the model and then sort of shows up in the data that you get this, this kind of pattern where, you know, people, uh, you know, as they get to the sort of the highest levels of ability, they, they can kind of get out of this game of follows and just sort of focus on people that, you know, they want to consume organically. Um, I think the, the, the uh, I think an, a, an argument for this kind of approach to problems, um, you know, when people talk about social media and kind of the, the dark sides of social media and, the role it's played in misinformation, um, you know. Whoops, we don't. Um, all right, sorry. You know, when when people kind of talk about the, um, you know, the dark sides of social media, that the focus has has often been on algorithms, and you know, the, the problem is with the algorithms, and the algorithms are doing this, and the algorithms are doing that. Um, you know, I think that there, there's uh, a lot to be gained by kind of starting from an individual trying to, to like they're trying to accomplish something and you know at least in the case of some social media the network structure that you get seems to be more determined by by people's individual incentives uh that they're acting on rather than than something where the, the platform sort of made them do it like these are choices that they they've made and kind of creates a certain certain network structure uh i mean in a kind of a payoff or an advantage of thinking about it in terms of incentives and costs is i think it makes it clearer to think about policy interventions and platform rule changes that that might alter things. So, you know, I, for example, um, you know, if you think that you you know you want to kind of take certain sort of users, you don't want to silence them, but you'd like them to you know maybe not find your platform so attractive. 
um, you know, you could maybe take away their ability to reciprocate by, say, losing their ability to see who follows them. And you know, th this is kind of a trick that you actually see in some forums, where they they shadow ban people, and you know, no no one can they don't they don't know that they've they've been kind of uh, uh, no one can see what they're producing, um, and so they they kind of lose that interaction with their content. You know, if they're like a, a troll and they're just kind of posting stuff to sort of annoy people. Once they stop getting attention, they kind of go away. You know that that this don't feed the trolls um, maxim. I think kind of reflects that logic, and so you know that that's a conclusion. You know that's something that a platform could implement if they chose. And I think you'd only have this idea if you were kind of coming from a perspective of thinking about the incentives, like what are people trying to accomplish here, uh, and how do you either make it like more costly or or less costly. Um, you know, I think another perspective that kind of comes out of this is. It gives you some insight into what the platforms are are trying to do, right? And even you know, in the case of say like recip, you know, uh, having this um, you know ability to reciprocate, it does it does raise people's utility. Like they they get a new kind of utility from having having an audience. So it's maybe not so surprising that the platforms try to engineer it in a way that you get a lot of that kind of social feedback that hey, people are engaging with your content because it causes you to stick around and and view ads and. Uh, you know, further further their platform objectives. Um, good. So I think probably we uh, good time to transition to questions more generally or conversation. Um, yeah, sure. That sounds great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, I guess my my first question. I'm I'm going to take advantage of being uh, um, you know in this position, but basically just so I learned from your slides that you are one of those high achievers. Is that right? You're not really. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm no, the, the 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 real high achievers are like, um, you know, the the like Eric Brynolfsons of the yeah. world. Not, you know, I, I'm I'm like a mid middle, okay. <laughs> middle level <laughs> reciprocator. I lose a lot of followers if I stop started unfollowing people. All right, fair. <laughs> okay, uh, but on a maybe slightly more serious note, uh, I think uh, Xiang maybe. Um, uh, maybe he, he he had some some extra comments, so uh, I'm gonna see if I can ask him to unmute. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, John. I'm uh, um, very hey, good to see work. you. Hey, good to see you too. Hey. Uh, yeah. So I, I was just thinking that you know maybe the number of followers um, decreases is not because people um, you know with high abilities they don't reciprocate, but they they'd rather they reciprocate at a more efficient level. So for example, um, you know, if they get attention from another sort of, uh, you know, famous person, then they sort of get the attention from all the followers of, of that uh, famous person, which is, you know, a lot. So in some sense, they're treating their network, um, not their individual attentions. Oh, so you mean, like, yeah, so like the idea being that like, if I'm a I'm a real star and I have other stars following me, I my sort of like return to having an audience is sort of flatter mm -hmm. yeah no that, that's a, that's an interesting idea we could we could potentially look at that I, I mean i think the uh they're probably like we don't you know we don't differentiate between like a follow is a follow sort of like regardless of the the, the quality i think that's probably a, you know an, an oversimplification you know i think people probably do care you know we get followed by someone who's a big deal you know that probably probably does add a, a source of of extra utility um you know in our 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 model in the sense that, you know, you because of like how these bargaining clubs end up working, um, you know, yeah, you you would get more utility, but you'd have you'd have the same kind of network that would be drawn, even though maybe maybe we're kind of undercounting. Like it would, it's more useful to have people following you who are who are slightly better. Um, no, it's a, it's it's an interesting idea. I'd have to think about how we could um, maybe either show that or rule it out empirically. But um, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Sure. Cool work. Thank you. All right, great. Um, I will also ask, uh, let's see, Timo Timoteus uh, to unmute if I'm doing this right. Yeah. Yes, hi. A very interesting presentation. I have one technical question. Can one user belong to many clubs or this is just one club per user? Thank you. Uh, sorry, could you say that one more time? Sorry. Just uh, does uh, can uh, uh, can one user belong to many clubs? Oh yes, N no. Uh, people are only in one one club at a time. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's actually so. 
uh, I'll add to that too, is that, is that restrictive? I'm kind of thinking just of myself. I kind of find myself in like the, you know, some econ digitization club, but also in a like intellectual property law kind of club. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that the idea of people being in like, hor like different horizontal communities, you know, I, I think that, that that's where, you know, some of the stylized nature of the model kind of breaks down, like people actually belong to multiple communities. Well, you know, when we say people only belong into one community, it, like a club, what, it, what we really mean is that they're, they're in a kind of band of people of about similar ability that they're willing to reciprocate with that, that not, you know, I think club does make you think of like, hiking and football and, you know, <laughs> and so the, the language is a little bit, but you can think of it more as like a snooty club that only like a certain like elite people would belong to that. That's the kind of club that, that we sort of have in mind, or so I think probably the better an, um, analogy for the model. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Like more like batches or something. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so Yura is, is asking a question. Oh, yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm actually... I'm actually walking. I'm multitasking before my teaching. Um, I was just uh, wondering a little bit about the um, advertising implications. So you did mention that when uh, more users are spending more time on the platform, that is exactly what the platforms want. But then there's this concept of like limited attention. And when this bartering attention model suggests that there's like there's attention hogging, right? And if I think about this limited attention, like does it mean that there's less attention left for advertising and how to think about that trade-off? That, Meaning like increased time of the platform versus uh, the remainder of attention. That's a, uh, no, it's a, it's a really interesting point. I mean, I, I know that um, my understanding is that most of these platforms, like when they think about the ad load that they're willing to subject people to, they, they think about it in terms of like displacing content that, you know, otherwise would have given you higher utility. I think, I think our model would say that you should displace the reciprocal content and kind of keep the star content. And that's how you would make people happy. Um, you know, in, in the paper, you know, we talk about kind of offline antecedents to, to this idea. And, you know, one of the examples we give is like open mic night kind of has a similar economics, right? Where a cafe would have people come and let them participate and, you know, be an audience for each other. And they're kind of standing in the background selling you food and drinks and that, that's sort of the, the business model. Um, you know, with the platforms, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's advertising, right? They're not, they're not selling you anything directly. Um, and I think, yeah, they, I think they have a, they want to keep you there. They want to keep you engaged and the content, you know, it's, it's, they want to keep you there both producing and consuming content because while you're doing that, you're more likely to, to see ads and that, you know, but you know, you're asking a question of like, how do they make that trade off, which is, you know, we don't, we don't model it, but I think it's, it's a really interesting one. All right. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, Mike Ward is also, uh, also has some, some comments. Yeah, I, I just, I thought of this as a, as a model of uh, high school cliques and popularity <laughs> brought back all kinds of bad memories. But, the, um, but that means that you, if you were to look at the people within different high schools, you have lots of different observations of, of very distinct horizontal groups of comparable size and so forth. Look yeah, I mean, I have, have I to think, use Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we, we uh, you know, we did econ Twitter because that's sort of what we what we knew. Um, but I, I think you're right. I, I mean, I, I suspect that, you know, every once in a while, I find like on Twitter, I'll wander into some other community that, you know, th that there's a whole other community that that is, think, you know, geologists who are tweeting about geology stuff. And, you know, I, it's all going over my head. Like the, these other horizontal, you know, clubs exist. Um, and then, yeah, I think the the idea of like an unpleasant high school is sort of a little bit of what's going on is, is not not far off. All right, great. Um, there are a lot of questions here, so I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody here. Um, I think Eileen had kind of a question that was tagging on to, uh, to your last question, actually. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, so just quick follow up on your question. I wondered if there's anything in your model or if you have any thoughts on more generally the fact that attention is quite a scarce resource, if only for like the physical limitations of human beings. Um, and whether that factored into your model or you have any thoughts about how you extend your model. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, 
we, um, we, you know, we gave everyone sort of just this like Q zero cost, um, you know, rather than kind of modeling it, like, you know, you have 24 hours a, in a day and you have to do like a labor leisure trade off kind of the idea that, that, um, people didn't use Twitter so much that we, we had to like, think of it like a, a, a constraint, like you only have so many hours in the day. Uh, maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's not true for, for everyone, but the, you know, the idea was that, um, it's a small enough amount that it's pretty, it's reasonable to treat it as, as like a linear thing. Like you're not, you're not hitting up against that, that constraint, but we, you know, we're very like motivated by this, this notion that like attention is the scarce, the scarce thing, you know? So we're, we're both like big Herb Simon fans and like that, that was sort of what we were doing it. We were kind of trying to find like a mathematically, you know, tractable way to think about just that there was some cost to adding like one more thing is going to cost you. Um, and, you know, just doing it in a linear way is, is the simplest thing. But, you know, if someone was really pushing up against, you know, how many hours there are in the day, then, then you know, then that would, that would be a problem. All right. Uh, great. Then um, we also have Dominic Reza. Hi, John. Thank you for the interesting Hi. talk. Um, I wanted to come back to the algorithm point that you raised. So in these, these, uh, if say you're Twitter and you now read your paper and you know that there, you, you can basically build a recommender machine that now recommends potential content for consumption, as well as users for that, that can be your audience. Uh, and you have sort of potentially a trade-off. Um, what should you optimize this recommender for? Um, does your paper speak to that trade-off, and how would you approach it? Yeah, I, it's it's a it's a great great question. I mean, I think uh, um, if I had to put on like what's a criticism of of you know a paper, we don't I don't think we treat what the platform is doing seriously enough and try to to, to dig into what their incentives are. Um, I I think that yeah, there there are things that would come out like you know the fact that the network structure gives you some indication of ability and, and like what people truly enjoy. And so you could start to do, you know, an algorithmic feed where you sort of start emphasizing people who I think you, you really want to see and not the people that you're just doing it in a reciprocal way. Um, I think that it, what's interesting though, I think from the platform's perspective is that's a bit of a dangerous game where if it's, if you start to think that following someone is, is doesn't actually mean anything. It's like you're pushing a button that's not actually connected. You start undermining the incentives. And if people start to think that they're just tweeting into the void and no one's actually paying attention to them because they've been algorithmically curated into a, you know, a, a room where, where no sound escapes, um, people will, will not be as interested in participating. And so, you know, I don't, I, I don't really know anyone at, at these, these companies, but I, I imagine, or I'm guessing that this may be a trade-off that they have to think about. Like algorithmic curation maybe makes people happier in the sense that they get more content that they truly enjoy, but it weakens the incentives for people to produce content if they think that, you know, they're not, their content actually isn't being consumed by anyone. And, you know, I mean, algorithmic, you know, curation is like pretty controversial. I mean, you know, Twitter, you still have the option and Facebook, you don't anymore, but, um, it, it, you know, the, the, the purely chronological is probably the one that, you know, maximizes the, um, you know, uh, attention utility uh, at the expense of the consumption utility. All right, thank you. Um... Also kind of, uh, yeah, we're moving, moving back to kind of the, the same questions or a similar question as uh, Yura and uh, Eileen, uh, but with a little different take from Dimitri. Uh, good morning. Uh, how do you think about what Twitter itself uh, is doing in this model and how to fit that in? Like what is Twitter trying to maximize and suggesting folks for me to follow? And how does that sort of moderate the behavior of like the, the content producers in your model? Oh, thanks, Dimitri. I, I think the, um, I mean, I think that they're, they're trying to sell ads. I mean, so there's kind of like a, you know, into a first approximation, that's what they're trying to do. I, you know, I, I think, you know, we don't really model the intensive margin of like how much time people spend. It's kind of this binary, like you're on, you're off. Um, I, I think to the extent you think that participation means you send, you spend a certain amount of time online. If they, if they treat all users as sort of equally valuable, they, they have an incentive to, um, you know, get as many people with participating as they, they possibly can. Um, and so what, you know, what that would, like the lurkers 
are 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 going to be there because they want to consume the the, the star content. Um, the people who are you know that are only there or only producing because um, they get this attention utility. If 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 you otherwise wouldn't have them at all, like if they wouldn't wouldn't participate, well, you know, then the the platform has a strong incentive to, you know, encourage this kind of um, attention attention bartering, um, and so I, I think that it's it's in their interest to actually make it pretty pretty salient who's following you and unfollowing you. I I know like when Instagram was kind of toying with the idea of eliminating likes and feedback, it was like extremely controversial, um, and I, I mean I don't I think probably even within Instagram, but you know, to, to me, that was kind of a smoking gun that there was a people who want that, they want that, you know, feedback. And so the platform is designing to kind of give that to you. Um, you know, I mean, you know, this kind of, I, I, there, there's this discussion about, you know, is social media addictive? And there's this great paper by Hunt Alcott and co-authors where they paid people to not use Facebook for a while, and they've kind of reported better mental health. You know, and I don't, I don't want to overclaim, but I think that this is like kind of consistent with this idea that, people don't totally enjoy um, social media that there's a little bit of like, yeah, you get the attention, but you know, you, at the, at the same time, you have to maybe consume a lot of content that you otherwise wouldn't, that makes you sad, makes you unhappy, but you know, you're, you're doing it for the thing that you really want, which is, you know, attention and affirmation and, and these other kind of human desires that, that are, um, you know, I think are, 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 are there. Yeah, super interesting for sure. Um, I, we got, I think, at least two more questions. And so that puts us at wonderful time, I think. Uh, Yu Shuang uh, Wang, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, yes, the pronunciation is right. Okay, okay so I'm curious about um, if this market is perfectly competitive, because you see, it seems like a few uh, oligopoly stars are deciding the Q0. And is it possible uh, to? do a field experiment, like maybe ask maybe Donald Trump to stop tweeting for a while? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I think that if there were people who were interested in running field experiments, I would love that. I, I toyed around with the idea of unfollowing everyone and seeing what what happened and whether or not like the IRB, like, do I need to do that? Is that, is that something that the IRB would have to improve and like see what happens? Uh, I haven't done that yet. Um, but you know, I, 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 it would be interesting to say, like, you know, take someone and and have like a whole bunch of people follow them, and on a control group you don't, and then you see if the treated people, you know, become pickier in their reciprocation, or do they like, do they go and like shed a whole bunch of uh, uh, reciprocal following relationships that they don't, they don't really like. I, you know, I don't, I don't know about the ethics of of some of these experiments. I would be, you know, you go to like a bot, you know, you can buy, you can buy followers. I think. But they tend to be, you know, it's kind of a gray market or probably even a black market. And I, I, I wouldn't feel like super comfortable sticking a bunch of bot followers on someone to observe their behavior. I, I think the IRB would have a problem with that for good reason. But, I, you know, I think in, in principle, th there are a whole bunch of like testable, testable predictions that you could, you could look at with field experiments. Um, so if there's anyone in the audience from Twitter and they want to talk about running some experiments on the platform, uh, you know, hit me up. Okay, thank DM you. Me, I think would be the right way to put that. <laughs> yeah, great idea. Uh, okay, so then we got uh, Felix Schlieff as I think the, the last person with a question so far. Uh, hi, so I was wondering um, if I understood the setup correctly, the quality of the content is just a function of the innate ability of the, of the tweeter. Um, but so on one of your slides, you had this poll and probably if I with my very few followers would tweet the same poll. It would not be very interesting, but uh, be because you with uh, comparatively, comparatively many more uh, followers tweeted it, it was much more interesting. So is, is, there, is there an opportunity in the model to have the quality to depend also on the number of followers? Because that's also- a, they, that's, a, that's an interesting point. I, I think, yeah, you might, you might imagine that by neglecting this intensive margin, like it's just a fixed quality, but once you have a bigger audience, you have stronger incentives to try to make you know, make more quality, uh, you know, do, do quality work. I, I think that, that that's probably right. And it's a kind of an interesting, like intensive margin or like endogenize quality. Um, I think another thing that's going on is like, you know, I, obviously this is like an extreme and somewhat, 
you know, silly simplification, like all econ models are, you know, you're kind of like stripping out a lot of like nuance that exists in the real world. Um, but, you know, I mean, one of, one of the things that, you know, is a kind of a, an argument in favor of social media is that, you know, every once in a while, people have a really fantastic tweet, you know, a really insightful point, and it gets retweeted and shared a lot. And so just having more people kind of adding content, you know, it, it probably means that, you know, yeah, you may have like some kind of average ability, but you're sort of uh, extreme right tail tweets, you know, add, add a lot to the world. You know, the, the flip side of that, of course, is that a lot more people producing, you could think of this also as like a reservoir of disinformation and sort of conspiracy theories that you have a lot more people just injecting a lot more content that then can get picked up and spread. And, you know, I mean, it, you know, the model, we kind of talk about ability and like, it's like, this is purely a good thing. Um, you know, the you may, you may be an able follower by our model by being, you know, spreading disinformation and lies and terrible things. It, what, we, what we really just mean is that there's a market for it. Like people, people want to consume it without a lot of value judgment that, 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 you know, this is actually like a good thing. Okay, thank you. All right, that's wonderful and right on time, I think. So we, there is a couple of, uh, you know, suggestions for, for these, you know, uh, oh, great. possible um yeah for possible experiments but but anyway i'll i'll be happy to share the chat with you as well yeah um, if you could copy the chat that would be super yeah. helpful for yeah. you know it's ephemeral so yeah exactly and um yeah so thank you so much john for for this wonderful presentation and for apostolos for answering a lot of questions on the way too uh i think this you know we'll we'll stop here for today and just with a with a note that in two weeks we'll have rob siemens from nyu stern uh give the next talk so Awesome. Thank you Thanks so much, time. everyone. I, I really appreciate yeah. it. And follow me on Twitter. <laughs> All right.